Alrighty, let's take a look at perovskite. <clears throat> and that has the chemical formula uh, generally, that, that, well, the general formula is often given to it as barium titanate, which has the perovskite uh, crystal structure. Um, so that's two, two cations, barium, uh, barium, titanium, and then oxygen. And you'll notice that, well, that there's, there's two types, so that creates a little bit of an issue for, for me because you know how I like to um, use um, these colors. I like to make my anions blue. So what am I going to do? Because I get I get two types of cations. Um, so well, I'll have to use two colors that are kind of red. And so I'm going to call them as well. I'm going to see this is the A cation. All right. This is a convention that's often used. And then I'm going to use another color, uh, purple. Isn't that pretty? Anyway, there you go. And <laughs> we call that the B cation. Um, okay, and so we can proceed through with that. And I, I drew a careful cube there before I started recording. And what we want to do is we want to position at the center, at the face center of each of those cubes, is where we're going to position an anion. And this is one way of looking at it. And you'll come across different ones where the unit cell is shifted over with different anions in in in, in the corner positions and such. But this is one way to look at it. So we're going to put the uh, anions in the center of each of these. Um, uh, faces. So we got the face diagonals, the one one zero directions, all crossing. So right in the middle of it is where we should have the anion. So I'll go ahead. There you go. I've, I've put those in, um, and I can get rid of the uh, face diagonals to clean it up a bit. And then, and actually, let's do some quick some quick math here. So we've got uh, we got six faces on the cube, uh, and each one we're only concerned with the half of the anion that's inside. So that's three, and that works out. That hits our formula just right. So now we have to find a way to put one barium and one titanium into this um, unit cell. And of course, the titanium is going to be that purple color. Um, so, the, okay, what about uh, the, the A um, cations? So the A cations are going to go into the corner positions of the cube. Okay, uh, so there we go. We've occupied each of the corner positions, and again, you know, we've got... Um, Eight corners on a cube times one eighth of a sphere inside the cat uh, inside the cube, so that that's one, which is fantastic. Our, our stoichiometry is working out. Um, and then what about the B cation? That's the titanium. Well, that fellow is going to go right in the very center of the cube, and I've drawn in faintly here the direction of contact between this central cation here, the B cation, if you will, and the nearest neighbor oxygens. And so the coordination number. Uh, the coordination number for the B cations is fairly straightforward. One, two, three, four, you know, front, back, left, right, top, bottom. Coordination number of six, that's an octahedral site. It's a little bit more difficult, um, however, to see the coordination number for the, the A cations. So I want to take a moment to, to look at that in a little more detail uh, with you. And I, and I think that the, the, the best way to do that is going to be like this to... And duplicate the structure. And you see, I'm making another unit cell. Now, we're we originally only concerned with that one unit cell, but what if I were to draw another unit cell that was just exactly to the right of the first? Okay, so there it is. Now we can start to see the uh, atoms that exist um, be, beyond the um, the one we were looking at originally. Okay, so I'm going to turn that off for a second, make it invisible. And what I want to do is I'm going to use the yellow color here. As uh, some of you may know, I, I sometimes do, and use that to indicate the direction of contact, just like we did here for this central um, for this central uh, cation. But now I'm going to do it for the, the the B the barium, if you will, the A cation. I mean, okay. So the A cation is going to be touching this face centered. Uh, oh, that's too too thick. Let's make a thinner line here. Okay, it's going to be touching. Uh, uh, maybe get it to actually match up. There we go. Okay, so it's touching that face-centered one, right? It's touching across that face di uh, diagonal direction. Um, so that means it's also touching this right side face-centered uh, anion. And then, of course, across this front face of the cube here as well, it's also touching. Okay, so, there, so far we've got, you know, one... Two, oh, whoops. Um, we got one, two, three. Let me write that in for you. One, two, 
three. Okay, so so that's great. That's in this within the unit cell, but that front top right corner barium or cation is is sharing atoms also or touching is coordinated by it's got nearest neighbor atoms um, in this right hand uh, unit cell. So again, what I can do is I can draw um, the direction of contact to this right side face centered and then of course also to this right side face centered up at the front okay and that means that we've got that was one two three there's four five but then we also have unit cells we have a couple other unit cells don't we? we've got a unit cell um, that also exists right over here in front of our first unit cell and position that as carefully as I can. I get a little tweak. Okay. Boop. It's not not cooperating for some reason. Oh, I think I shifted it. Okay. Well, that, that's that's not bad. I rotated it slightly, but anyway. Um. So what we were doing is then we we're seeing. Okay, what's well, touching those ones? Well, so it's going to touch this face centered in this um in this anion uh, in this unit cell that is now out in front of our original unit cell. And then see this right side anion right here? Uh, I'll draw a little yellow dot there. Um, in fact, what I could do is I could also turn off, uh, correction, I'm going to turn off these other unit cells. So see this guy? That's the one I'm talking about. This anion is also touching that, OK? So now we've got uh, five, uh, oh, did I miss one? Right side, that top, top, top. Uh, should be, should be good. So that makes it five, six, seven. Okay. And I can turn those guys back on so that it'll help you to make, to, to see this final um, atom that we haven't yet added to the to the tally, and that's the this unit cell, the atom, the anion in the top face there of this unit cell that exists sort of towards the right and in front of our original unit cell. So then that's our that's our last. Um, anion touching this central, this cation. So draw that one in and give that number eight. So we've got eight so far, but that, that geometry is duplicated above the plane. These one, two, three, four in the plane, the ones that I've labeled one, four, eight, and seven, those ones are shared. So we're not going to count those again. We're only going to count these, these four below or their, their counterparts in the plane above. So we've got four above, four anions in the plane, and four below the plane for a total of, um, of 12. So the coordination number for, uh, let me make that font a little bit bigger here. There we go. Coordination number for the anions uh, oh, correction. I'm looking. Look at this. I got so excited or confused. I guess I should say. Um, what I meant to do was this is the one we were looking at, right? We were looking at this uh, cation here. This coordination number is 12. All right. That's what we just showed. Now, in fact, the anions are, are linearly coordinated. So that is the anion. Clean this up a second here. Go back to just our original. Uh, just our original one. In fact, what I could do is I could turn off that. The anions are only touching along this direction here. So there would be another B cation above, and the anions would have coordination number with uh, their nearest neighbor anions in, in that direction uh, of two. Um, so we have the B cations, coordination number of 12. Uh, sorry, A cations, coordination number of 12. B cations, coordination number of 6. 
And that is the perovskite crystal structure. Last thing that I, I thought I'd show you, which is um, sometimes a little, um, little, little confusing, is what does the actual arrangement of the anions look like? Okay. So what we can do now to, to look at to, to do that is is draw in our um, the, our surrounding unit cells, and what I want to do is and show you, okay, there's a uh, direction between these anons, the, the, the two face-centered ones, and from the, the top face-centered down to the bottom is another, is, um, well, actually, what I'm doing is I'm just, I'm trying to draw in for you the, um, just the anions to show their, their positioning, okay? And so then we have to draw this unit cell, which exists out here. And so then we can see, ah, okay, so the anions touch across this way. That correction, they don't, they don't touch that way. They, this is the geometry between them. And then finally, that back unit cell allows us to complete this little bit of geometry for the anions. So what I've done is I've connected the face-centered anions here to show you the um, arrangement of anions. Because sometimes the arrangement of anions is is, um, is, is described as face-centered cubic, which is actually inaccurate because it, it's a it's a face they're in the face-centered positions. But if I draw now for you just the anions that are touching this cube that I've drawn. We've got these corner ones that are contributed from those top face-centered atoms. We've got these corner ones contributed from the bottom face-centered atoms. Okay, then we have these mid-plane ones, or the ones on the, just referring to this blue cube, the left side face, the right side face, the front face-centered position, and the back face-centered position. But the top and the bottom are occupied by those A cations. So if I turn off all those other unit cells, you'll see the positioning of the anions on their own, with apparently an extra little bit of a line that I didn't need to draw in, um, is not uh, completely uh, face-centered cubic. They are in the face-centered positions, but not the face-centered cubic positions. They are in the face centers of the cube but not in face center cubic positions. All right, so we've looked at quite a bit of stuff there. I, I hope that that uh, helped. It is fairly complicated structure.